Hi. I have never done a video like this before. Just like a confession. Actually, I did do one, Confessions of a Lick Addict, a few years ago, but it was a bit tongue-in-cheek, whereas this one is going to be really honest, down to the bone. In fact, I tried to record this about six months ago when the incident happened that I'm going to relate, but I was too insecure about opening up about what I considered at the time to be a weakness. I didn't want to admit the thing that I'm going to admit, you see, because I'm Nick Holmes from Jazz Duets with 245,000 subscribers. This kind of thing shouldn't be happening to me, shouldn't have happened. But it did, and and it surprised me. But life is like that, full of surprises. Things come up, as you probably know. Shit happens. I mean, last year, I got divorced. And that was hell. Even though I knew it was coming. I saw the signs. But anyway, I'm on the men nicely now. Going to the gym. I'm getting stronger all the time, and I learned a lot. And they say anything that doesn't you makes you stronger, so... Yeah, that's the way I feel about it. But anyway, I'm prevaricating. I want to get to the point. I need to get to the point here. About six months ago, some friends of mine, they said, Hey Nick, do you know that Baptiste Herbin is in town? in Cordoba. This is in Argentina, of course. They said, yeah, he did a concert last night. We were supporting him. You know, we were the backing band. And um, I said, wow, I didn't even know he was here. You know, I was looking after my kids. Anyway, they said that they had played with this amazing French sax player and that he was going to be at the barbecue. And they thought it would be good for me to meet him. So I thought, you know, why not? It's not every day you get to meet a monster sax player, especially here in Argentina. So I went to the barbecue at my mate's house on the side of the river, as I remember, and I met Baptiste and his wife, you know, and they were really cool. And um, I'd seen him play on YouTube and I realized, you know, he was amazing. After the barbecue and a, and a stroll by the side of the river, we went into my friend's studio and we had to kind of a uh, jam session. And that is when I kind of lost it. I lost myself. You see, before I was just thinking, oh, I'm just going to go in there and play with the guys, you know, didn't think anything about it. But, um, you know, so I was kind of relaxed especially as it was kind of in the friend's house, in his private studio where I'd been before. But anyway, as soon as the guy, Baptiste, started playing, I kind of shat my pants. I mean, the phrases that were coming out of his Selma saxophone were incredible. You know, he was just, he is a player on a really different level. And he played everything. I mean, he played everything you could think of. High, low, fast, substitutions. Scales I hadn't really heard of before. Um, yeah, I was like listening right next to him, hearing these unimaginable things, you know. Um, and the technique, the pyrotechnics, so it was mind-blowing. So when it came for me to play my turn, after he'd played, I remember the tune was Footprints. I just lost myself. I became totally self-conscious. I could hardly put a phrase together. Actually, I'm thinking about it now and 
it was like I was starstruck or kind of note struck. It's a bit like you might be in front of like a really beautiful woman and not knowing what to say and freezing. Yeah, just kind of becoming self-conscious. Anyway, I tried as hard as I could, but I mean, I played something, but it just didn't flow what I was playing. And it got to the point where I just wanted to get out of there. I was beginning to feel, well, I was feeling humiliated. I just wanted to get away and kind of hide. Um, it was really unpleasant, you know, what I put myself through. You know, it was, I take ownership um, of it all. Anyway, I played a few more tunes, but um, nothing really changed. And I started playing kind of less and less. The strange thing is though, this kind of thing had not happened to me in years. I can't remember. It must have been like 15 years since I'd had this kind of thing happen to me. And afterwards, I was thinking about it for quite a few days. You know, I was thinking, what happened? I remember actually saying to the guitar player, um, when we were saying goodbye as well, you know, he said, you know, that was rough. So I think he felt the same as me. But um, anyway, um, so afterwards I'm thinking to myself, I was going over what happened. I was thinking, why didn't I do this? Why didn't I play that? Replaying the, the experience. You know, I was a little bit kind of traumatized. Sounds like I'm exaggerating, but yeah, it was kind of strong for a few days. Yeah, I thought later even, you know, why didn't I just play one note? That would have been a cool thing to do. I mean, Miles, he would have probably done that. You know, just to be different. If the guy is playing a lot, yeah, he's filled up all the soundscape, you know, play something different afterwards. But I didn't do that. Everything I was playing, you know, I was totally conscious of. I mean, it seemed super obvious. I just couldn't get into the zone. You know, the relaxed zone that I believe we really need to get into um, if we're gonna play, if we're gonna improvise. Right after the experience, I was determined to make a video, but I decided not to, you know. It's like I said, I'm Nick Holmes. I'm supposed to be able to deal with things. I am the guru, you know, on YouTube. But now, after six months, I think I should share the experience. I mean, the point of the channel is that I have to be honest about these kind of things. I hope next time I'll be able to be Nick, to be okay with being myself, even if I haven't got this like amazing technique of Baptiste. And that is the really important thing, I think, of being a jazz musician. Surely that's what the greats had, that they were themselves. And that is what made them individuals. They weren't trying to copy other people. Paul Desmond, he did not play loads of notes. Neither did Art Pepper, who played with so much soul. There are so many ways of doing it. Hundreds, thousands, an infinite amount of ways. Chet Baker just played what he heard. Beautiful, succinct phrases. And also Miles Davis, what can you say? Totally unique. Probably what these guys had is the, that uniqueness and that connection. They had to have that connection, I'm sure of it, of just being honest, what they had inside themselves, sharing that. This is the difficult challenge though, for mere mortals, non-geniuses. Because when someone like Baptiste Hubbing comes along and is playing with such a blistering, mesmerizing technique, it's hard to maintain the frame, your frame, 
and not get sucked into wanting to also show that you have some technique. I mean, this is, we're talking about ego here. Anyway, I would love to hear what you think about this. If you have any similar situations or any tips for any others, if you want to leave them here, it would be great. Now, after a few months, I'm feeling a bit calmer about it all, thankfully. But at the time, it was a big deal for me. And it threw me off for a while. I mean, it's not the kind of thing you can practice. So, I mean, what's the conclusion? You know, we have to be right in our minds before we can really play. We have to be ourselves. Anyway, that's what I think. Thanks for listening.